A way on, on this story, let's go to Dave McDonald, founder and lead instructor of the International Canadian School of Survival. Thanks for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This sounds like dense brush, but the weather, it's warm. It's probably humid. What kinds of things do you need, Martin, when you're out there? Food and water, but would you even need shelter? Yes, you would definitely need shelter at night. The temperature drops, so you'd be getting wet by day. So, uh, you'd be getting low on calories, dehydrated. So you would definitely want some shelter in the evenings. Um, you'd want to be able to get a fire going. You want to be able to find first aid supplies and take care of any first aid issues. And then you'd also be looking for uh, shelter, water, and food. Okay, so it's been more than a week uh, for this uh, Mr. Carpentier who's been on the loose. Tell me, as you were talking about first aid, for example, what kinds of things he could be looking for? Because, you know, we know there was a car crash uh, just before he disappeared. Okay, so he may have some lacerations or abrasions, uh, bruises. Uh, he would be suffering possibly even from shock, and uh, he would be dehydrated by now, I would think. It would be difficult to drink enough water, especially if you're on the move to stay hydrated in these conditions. So he could definitely be suffering from some exposure as well to the elements. So we understand Insects. we understand from police that uh -huh. he likely broke into a trailer. Would you imagine he'd be looking for food at that point then? Yes, he'd be looking for anything he could use to keep going. Uh, he'd be looking for food, maybe some clothing, something he could carry as a hasty shelter, uh, water, something to carry water with as well would be very handy got it, a water bottle or some other carrier to take along with him. Uh, how long yes. can somebody survive in, in conditions like this when they don't have a ready supply of uh, food and water and it's unclear if they have shelter? It's very difficult. Uh, you know, you really got, it really sucks when you're evading and surviving. It's bad enough when you're just doing the survival on its own without people looking for you, but trying to hide from people and survive is 10 times or 100 times more difficult than sitting static in a position trying to survive. What about wildlife? How much of a concern would animals or even bugs be? Uh, bugs would be bad. I know they are in Manitoba. I remember I was posted in uh, North Quebec City in Valcartier, Quebec for six years and the bugs were absolutely horrible, especially in the evening when the sun went down, they would come out in force or if, during the day, if you're in the shade, they'd be out in force. Plus, there's poisonous plants like poison oak, poison ivy. All these will come into play, make your life horrible uh, at times. And I don't know uh, if you if you know the answer to this question, but obviously, police have descended on a on the area, likely have the perimeter surrounded. I mean, how difficult would it be to evade them for a long period of time, or try to get out outside of that perimeter? Uh, the police are very good at looking for people, uh, especially if they're using local search and rescue, local resources, local knowledge. It would be very difficult to evade for any length of time. It can be done and has been done in the past. Uh, military have done it a lot, and but they have the training. So I'm not sure what kind of training you would have. They would he would have, but uh, you would need some substantial training, luck and uh, a plan, really. What kind of training are you talking about? What are the skills you would need to be out there? Uh, cam and concealment, escape and evasion, water, purific or water purification, um, procurement, uh, how to get food as well, how to build uh, shelters that are low silhouettes and hidden away. It takes quite the, uh, the uh, skill set to evade for any length of time. Are you surprised he hasn't been found yet? No, not really. Uh, those forests are pretty dense in that area. Uh, there's a lot of wilderness. There's a lot of logging roads. Uh, they would probably set up at the choke points, bridges and rivers, and they would uh, drive the roads looking for track traps so that you could see if somebody walked through that area recently. Um, it would be harsh environment for sure. Got it. Dave McDonald, appreciate your time, sir. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Take care.